dear viewers, welcome to the show Power Chat, Nepal's only TV talk show in English discussing development since 2016. Through this episode tonight, we are discussing humanitarian work during crisis, focusing on the agenda of reforms for Nepal Red Cross Society. I'm joined tonight by Mr. Pitambar Aryal, Secretary General of Nepal Red Cross Society, country's largest humanitarian organization. Let's talk. Welcome to the show, Mr. Aryal. Thank you very much for inviting me in this important uh, kind of program. Well, you have been into the humanitarian work for a long time and recently working with the uh, Nepal Red Cross Society, country's largest humanitarian organization, as I uh, mentioned at the beginning. Uh, Nepal Red Cross Society in Nepal have long been criticized for not maintaining transparency. Uh, also, there were media reports about the good governance issues. Uh, so you are new with the Nepal Red Cross Society as the General Secretary, uh, along with other uh, members and leaders. How do you evaluate the current state of humanitarian work in relation to delivery of Nepal Red Cross Society throughout all these years? Well, uh, when it comes to my involvement with Red Cross Society, definitely I am new for particular for this position as a Secretary General. However, I had been or I used to be involved uh, in a various roles and responsibilities. I started my volunteer career at the school like being junior and youth Red Cross member and uh, teacher sponsor and later on I used to be professional or I was heading uh, health service department, disaster management department and youth Red Cross department of Nepal Red Cross Society. That was I think uh, more than 15 years my involvement and at the same time I used to be with the IFRC and being a member of IFRC I know uh, Nepal Red Cross and its uh, working kind of uh, procedures or modalities. Definitely uh, uh, last eight or nine years let's say uh, not that maybe uh, around five six years I was completely out uh, from Nepal Red Cross Society I used to be with IFRC. That's why, uh, of course, I, I have been seeing or observing various uh, news uh, and various uh, media kind of reports and various concerns as well. And uh, it is uh, highly essential to, to uh, ventilate to our audience or public what Nepal Red Cross has been doing or where we can move forward. And uh, basically, when it comes to various allegations or controversies that uh, has been uh, investigated by various authorities that are they are the competent authorities and at the same time current uh, you know ad hoc committee also form kind of uh, task forces in order to review and see what were the recommendations been made by various task forces and at the same time how we can really as uh, identify those gaps or uh, errors been made in the past. So based on that, we, we have been working very, very rigorously to, to come up with a clear kind of uh, agenda for uh, transformation of uh, Nepal Red Cross Society. And uh, when it comes to your uh, question regarding uh, humanitarian services or work, uh, Nepal Red Cross has been involved or uh, conducting its, its uh, services, humanitarian services since its esta establishment. But when it comes to our tenor or when we started our uh, kind of responsibility, uh, basically uh, COVID-19 has imposed unprecedented uh, challenges to humanitarian world and it has created a uh, great problem or severe problem in terms of uh, uh, gathering or sharing or phys maintaining physical contacts. So it has a huge impact. Besides the fact, Nepal Red Cross has been mobilizing its volunteers as well as its staff to respond to COVID uh, pandemic. Well, uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Arial, for this uh, observation. Um, I will come back to you on uh, your way of work here in Nepal amid COVID-19 pandemic, but again, do you agree that the resources have been misused uh, in the recent years with the Red Cross? Because there are not, not only media reports, but you know, uh, uh, also criticism from 
the oversight bodies as well. And what are your plan, you know, putting the Red Cross a glorious history in Nepal uh, at place? Well, we, we would like to, uh, while, while saying we, it means the EDA committee is committed to, to uh, make its services very efficient or cost effective. Uh, that is our first kind of uh, uh, commitment that was been made during our first uh, CC meeting. And secondly, we want to maintain transparency. All the work being carried out by EDA committee will be very, very transparent. And uh, we want to ensure or adhere or comply good governance mechanisms. So these are our key principles. Of course, we are guided by Nepal Red Cross, our Red Cross uh, principles, international Red Cross principles, which really or uh, which clearly indicates that uh, all these principles come there as well, like uh, you know humanity, impartiality, or uh, neutrality, or there are independence, there are seven basic principles, which also talks about transparency or uh, following the uh, minimum humanitarian principles as well. So we are very much committed. And secondly, as I highlighted in my uh, earlier conversation or saying that uh, we really want to see uh, those recommendations made by various investigation committees formed by Social Welfare Council, or formed by even within Red Cross, uh, Nepal Red Cross had formed a committee, and uh, there was some sort of investigation going on in the past as well, and uh, the, uh, uh, district administration office. So we would like to go through, and we have already gone through those recommendations, and certain actions have been taken as already. So. Uh, while saying that definitely we need to improve our system and uh, when it comes to uh, proper use of resources that is a key concern and uh, whenever we get a huge resource from international support or generate funding domestically we need to make sure that that resource goes to targeted population well what For is that your uh, vision of uh, the right cross i mean the new leadership's vision of right cross here in nepal the principles that you are mentioning that of the neutrality, transparency, objectivity and all. Well, uh, we would like to be uh, very, very transparent and uh, accountable, uh, cost effective uh, humanitarian agency which could deliver humanitarian services to most vulnerable population. Or uh, the way we work will help to uh, uh, reduce humanitarian or uh, uh, human suffering. It means that we would like to mobilize the, the, our uh, volunteer kind of power as well as staff or, or kind of humanitarian power to, to alleviate human suffering. That is our prime vision. But when I say this one, uh, there are some elements which really uh, need to go through like uh, while delivering humanitarian services, of course you can reach to hundred people, but uh, how much resource has been spent to reach to those population? Uh, whether this agency reached to the uh, most needed population or is still uh, vulnerable population or beneficiaries or target population are left out, that is very important. So we want to make sure that all the humanitarian principles are followed uh, so that needy populations uh, receive our services either through our headquarters or branches or provincial branches or local branches. Uh, local means uh, we have a sub-chapter and uh, junior youth committees. So we would like to optimize our volunteer capacity or nationwide network to reach to most vulnerable population. Well, uh, Mr. Arial, how do you summarize uh, your work amid uh, the current state of COVID-19? How are you uh, reaching out to the most vulnerable groups and how are you partnering with the other stakeholders minimizing the impact of current state of pandemic? Actually, uh, uh, Nepal Red Cross Society, as you rightly highlighted that, one of the largest humanitarian organization in Nepal. It has 77 uh, district chapters. We have seven provincial committees, but it has uh, many sub chapters and uh, huge network of uh, junior youth red cross circle so there are 
more than 100,000 uh, trained volunteers. And uh, we, we have 1 million uh, general members or uh, total, it's uh, more than a million kind of volunteers. So it's a very, very big network. That's why reaching to most vulnerable uh, becomes little bit easier compared to other agencies. When we start any program, we headquarter doesn't directly implement to the uh, uh, area or uh, targeted area. We go through our province and uh, uh, district chapter and sub chapter. That's why we, 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 are, uh, we, we have uh, some sort of comparative advantage to mobilize our volunteers or train human resources. When it comes to uh, COVID response, uh, from the very beginning, like, uh, you know, uh, we started uh, COVID response, or Nepal Red Cross had started COVID response in February. Although even government of Nepal, uh, uh, you know, uh, imposed or uh, started the lockdown in March. So Nepal Red Cross, with the support of International Federation of Red Cross and Red Christian Societies, started working on COVID-19 response. That was started with uh, having some sort of guideline, some kind of approach paper, how to reach or how to deliver information or services to most vulnerable. That was the key work. And uh, once approach paper was designed, then later on uh, safety and security guideline was been developed. And you know, Nepal Red Cross has been providing services to uh, uh, you know, uh, through its uh, ambulance services or blood transfusion services and uh, first aid services, there are many frontline health workers or frontline workers. So we wanted to uh, make sure that they are safe, but at the same time, they are able to continue or deliver services. That's why we, we started upgrading our ambulances. Most of our ambulances were grade C but we had to you know upgrade them to grade b or grade 2 in order to like ensure that there is no transmission but at the same time they are safe and uh, uh, deliver services or transport the patient without any fear for that we provided support to district chapters to upgrade ambulances having compartment or providing mask or sanitizer and all the uh, PPs, particularly for uh, drivers, we, we had to provide full gown PPs as well, so that at least they are safe, but at the same time, they won't be source of infection for patient as well. So there is, there is a both possibility, I mean, getting infected from the patient or transmitting a virus from the driver, it could happen. That's why we had to work on that, and we did that. And secondly, you know, we, we have uh, many blood transfusion centers and blood is a lifeline service which needs to be continued either it is during emergency or non-emergency situation but during pandemic it has uh, due to low level of uh, volunteer donor program or limited volunteers donating blood we had uh, huge difficulties to maintain that as well and our uh, blood transfusion service worker and they were highly exposed or uh, highly vulnerable. That's why we, we provided all kind of uh, safety and security materials or supplies to them. And uh, at the same time, our first aid worker as well. That was our first priority to, to really uh, continue our lifeline services. And secondly, that was not enough because uh, there was a high possibility of at that time community transmission, although it was not happening. Then government was, uh, our government and local bodies, our lo local government started having quarantine centers or holding centers. So we provided our services or support to quarantine and holding centers by providing uh, hygiene kits or blankets, tarpaulins, buckets. And uh, even we established uh, hand washing posts. So in this way, we, we provided our support to government and later part, what we did was we, we had a collaboration with the uh, International Federation of Red Cross and Red Christian Societies. We have various partners, PNSs, as well as like UNICEF or WHO, UN agencies, and uh, even Coca-Cola Foundation. And they provided many items like ventilators. And we, we are handing over ventilators in seven hospitals. And uh, we uh, started from Kathmandu and uh, we went to 
uh, province one and province two and uh, province three i think most probably today they are handing over and we are going to uh, province uh, mm, three sorry five in this way three also done so all seven provinces uh, mostly the government identified specialized hospitals who provide uh, you know covid uh, response or treatment services we are handing over uh, ventilators not only that other ppes and other items also handed over to uh, uh, government uh, treatment centers in a phased manner so i would like to highlight here it's not only hardware part but we also worked in software part like organizing training ipc uh, infection control and pre in, in, uh, infection prevention and control uh, some, uh, that is uh, basically uh, for drivers and frontline workers as well as our volunteers because volunteers they are working rigorously in the community or in the districts that's why we use virtual means in order to organize this kind of trainings while doing so we, we invited technical people from government of uh, uh, ministry of health as well in order to facilitate some trainings as well well uh, mr arial you touched upon so many interesting issues really exciting to know uh, that you working with the vulnerable communities here in nepal minimizing the impact of covid 19 any specific reference or studies or you know your engagement uh, protecting the most vulnerable groups including that of the children and women of, of course i wanted to highlight that part as well while saying or uh, while delivering services we didn't only focus on hardware or software at the same time uh, we provided services to street children like combo kit like food combo ki, uh, uh, kind of package was been distributed to our street children and at the same time kishori kit or dignity kits have been distributed to those people and you rightly highlighted that mostly elderly or people with disability or women or children they are most vulnerable and many cases they are subject to exploitation or abuse as well that's why we have been focusing uh, on that matter and uh, you know within nepal red cross we have 13 departments out of them one is working for protection gender and inclusion we call it pgi or uh, jc uh, so whatever we call but prime focus of this department is to uh, uh, identify needs of those marginalized groups and design program and implement accordingly and some cases it implements vertically to the community but at the same time that departments uh, ensures that other departments are uh, using uh, a PGI lens while identifying needs of the community while working for DRR or DRM disaster risk reduction or disaster risk management or community resilience program or health service program they need to ensure that protection gender or inclusion elements are included or those lens are there for that they develop some sort of guideline and uh, some kind of checklist and even monitoring a checklist as well and that ensures that all the departments are using of those lens and uh, whether they certify or not that kind of mechanism also we are working also could you uh, elaborate more about the disaster preparedness here in nepal uh, you know a part of the humanitarian uh, work and the recent report uh, published about the disaster uh, condition uh, the states about the geographic impact in the countries like nepal are stakeholders in nepal including that of the state authorities ready to tackle with any possible disaster well uh, thanks for raising this issue and this has been a, a key challenge for uh, nepal as well as many other developing countries uh, including developed as well and uh, we know climate change impact has greatly contributed to to have very very uh, you know uh, extreme events either that is flood or landslides or uh, you know uh, heat wave or cold wave or many kind of like cyclones and uh, many people killed due to uh, disaster events and uh, when you see uh, disaster occurrences then of course uh, uh, mostly uh, coping capacity of developing country is very very less compared to developed countries because they have uh, a system and uh, forecasting mechanisms are there and uh, good uh, you know technology has been properly uh, used 
but in our case uh, basically uh, i wouldn't say government is not working definitely government has done uh, quite a good preparation and work but however uh, when we compare with the disaster incidents and our response mechanism still it is not very very adequate that's why there is a uh, huge need to improve or strengthen our capacity either it is government capacity or other agencies capacity i mean we worked quite a lot in order to establish a national disaster risk reduction and management authority and there is a act before we didn't have uh, we had uh, natural disaster uh, relief act but now the act has been changed and it is more encompassing all the elements or components of disaster risk reduction or preparedness which is very very holistic and uh, there is a council and uh, you know a council is chaired by prime minister and uh, there is a executive committee as well so various agencies are member of that but while saying that probably covid response has been done through other act since we, we have already uh, uh, drrm act then probably this could have been activated rather using other act and uh, uh, forming other mechanisms but the government uh, felt that that is the best option that's but what i would like to highlight here is that still uh, a holistic approach is needed now uh, covid is not a uh, 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 only health problem or health issue it is uh, social economic and uh, even psychological and there are so many uh, impact of uh, covid uh, you know infection it's not only a uh, person is becoming sick but uh, whole system is going to be collapsed because uh, no economic opportunities are moving or migrant workers are returning and uh, you know uh, uh, basically unemployment problem is there and people are not uh, really engaged in uh, construction sector or other areas now gradually it is reviving so it has a huge impact to our economy as well that's why uh, disaster uh, during this pandemic situation disaster risk and uh, its impact is very very high because response mechanism is not functioning like we face same problem how to respond to flood victims or let's say affected population or landslide affected population then we had to maintain safety and security as well so this has created or weaken or uh, i would say weaken system already weaken system well mr arial there are so many interesting issues you are sharing with us but we are coming to the end of the show uh, you uh, said that you know uh, you reiterated actually that uh, nepal red cross society is the largest humanitarian organization here in nepal with network in all districts but at the same time you uh, um, you know also agreed that uh, your resources have not been properly utilized uh, responding to the crisis especially that of the you know um, lack of blood or those who in need of uh, emergency uh, work what should be done so that you know uh, during the time of emergencies and during the time of crisis most vulnerable groups and needy peoples uh, are easily access to these services very quickly thank you for this question i think probably i need to little bit clarify that uh, nepal red cross to be very honest doesn't get uh, financial support from government only for uh, certain areas like, like blood transfusion or certain places it gets some sort of sor- support except policy support nepal red cross doesn't get financial kind of contribution from government besides that red cross is able to generate funding from international partners so we we would like to uh, 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 build a good relation with our government uh, counterparts or uh, authorities so that there is a smooth kind of flow of resources from international but at the same time we need to make sure that our resources are properly whatever we received from international partners is been used properly for that uh, we know we need to uh, use eil principle that is efficiency impact and localization now uh, whole system or nepal country itself has gone to federal system and uh, there is a provincial government and local government as well that's why we would like to strengthen local level our bodies our sub chapters or chapters so that they have capacity 
and then they monitor or they can deliver the services. Once local level capacity is strengthened, then uh, services will be effective as well as efficient. Why I am saying this is that mostly in the remote part of country, when someone is trained as a Red Cross volunteer, he or she can deliver services promptly. So they are beneficiaries, but at the same time they are responders. And when we talk about largest humanitarian organization, it's built by the sub-chapter, district chapter, and its nationwide uh, volunteers. So we really count on them, and our prime responsibility is to build their capacity, build roster and s monitoring system, and uh, refresher or uh, having some sort of backup mechanism so that uh, we can mobilize them effectively and efficiently. Well, uh, Mr. Arial, thank you very much for joining us. It was a pleasure talking to you. It's really a pleasure and it's a nice opportunity to talk and share uh, views on Nepal Red Cross and uh, somehow it's a plan for upcoming days as well. Thank you. Dear viewers, time now to wrap up the show. Keep watching us. See you next week. Namaste.